Doc Ellis working on a no-hitter. It was easier to pitch with the LSD. That's the way I was dealing with the fear of failure. He got it. There, Marvin Doc Ellis on a no-hitter. It was an ugly no-hitter. I got letters about it, but it was a no-no. The psychedelic performance enhancer for Doc Ellis' no-hitter. Lysergic acid diethylamide, LSD. Let's go down the rabbit hole to uncover the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Hello, and welcome to Sports Vaults, presented by Data Productions, uncovering the untold, lost, and forgotten files of the sports world. I took some LSD when I took off with the car, and the next thing I know, there I was out there, you know, high as a Georgia pine, tripping on acid. Pete Rose said he's sorry he bet on baseball. I'm putting on my ball. I put the no hitter on LSD. <laughs> it's all true. Twenty-five, blow him out. It's all true. Is it true? Did Doc Ellis really pull off one of the hardest feats in sports on LSD today on Sports Vaults? We will be diving into the miraculous no hitter performance by former Major League pitcher Doc Ellis. Only 299 in MLB history from the date this video is posted. No hitters are far from normal occurrences in the Major Leagues, but Ellis' performance may be the most unusual no hitter of them all, being under the influence of LSD, aka acid. Performance enhancers are a common thing in sports. Every athlete tries to gain an edge, be it legally or illegally within the rules. But the psychedelic substance, LSD, has never been considered a performance enhancer. But after Doc Ellis's no-no, maybe it should have been. Doc Ellis played in the majors from 1968 to 1979. In his respectable career, he amassed 138 wins, over 1,100 strikeouts, and a 3.46 earn run average. He was an all-star, a World Series champion in 1971 with the Pittsburgh Pirates, had three seasons with over 15 wins, and a Comeback Player of the Year award in 1976 with the New York Yankees. He was a 1970s sports icon, outspoken and controversial, loathed and adored. Charles Barkley, with a touch of Ozzie Guillen, a better professional career than most. But not once in his career did he pitch sober or the old term, plain naked. In the film No-No, a documentary, directed by Jeffrey Radice, Ellis admits to having substance abuse problems stemming back to his early childhood days. You get to the major leagues and you say, I, I got to stay here, what do I need? Oh yeah, I need some of this shit right here. It was Dexamil, better known baseball as Greenies. I didn't know that the stimulants would enhance your performance. It gives you the impression that you were throwing hard sometimes, pinpoint control, breaking off curveballs that you've never seen before. <laughs> you're more in tune to what you're doing, and you zero it in. You like what they call in the zone now. And sometimes you feel before the game, if you're warming up, say, oh man, I don't have shit on the ball. I don't know what's going to happen. And go out there and throw a hell of a game. <laughs> You know, it was a thing where I started off with one greenie, and then I did well. I take one again, I didn't do well, I took two. I used to take it, take them, shake them, throw them. If they fall down, I wouldn't take them. If they stood up, I did. Then if it wasn't enough standing, I'd take the ones that was laying down. I would try to out milligram any opponent. Before a game, I'd take a maximum 15, 17 pills. Not to say that I didn't have enough stuff to pitch in the major leagues, it's just that I'm trying to get a little edge. But for this historic performance on June 12, 1970, Greenies wasn't the primary substance at work. Well, here we are in seventh inning. Doc Ellis working on a no-hitter. Doc Ellis has put nine men on the bases, eight walks and one hit batsman, with three outs. Separate him and a no-hitter. Somewhere along the line, I'm sure this is all being recorded so that we can uh, have it for Doc if he throws the epic. Looking out at the scoreboard, he can see 0, zero, zero where it says San Diego.
during the time when I was pitching the no hitter in San Diego, I really didn't know, I didn't see the hitters. All I could tell was if they was on the right side or the left side. As far as seeing the target, the catcher put tape on his fingers so I could see the signals. But as far as seeing the, the, the batter themselves, I didn't really see who they were. The opposing team and my teammates, they knew I was high, but they didn't know what I was high on. They didn't really see it, but I had the acid in me, and I didn't know what I looked like with that acid. I had lost all concept of time. It was easier to pitch with the LSD because I was so used to medicating myself. That's the way I was dealing with the fear of failure. You know, if Doc's pitching, we know it's high, how high, high is it? I pitched every game in the major leagues under the influence of drugs. So how did this day come about? What were the causes that led up to this event? We flew into San Diego and I asked the manager, could I go home? Because we had an off day. And they normally let you go home if you're in the area. So he said, yeah. So I took some LSD at the airport when I took off with the car, because I knew where it would hit me in LA. A high from LSD came from snorting the LSD or you crush the pills and you actually snort at the LSD. And we did, we did LSD in my girlfriend's house at that time. And whether or not the story becomes fictional, as far as how he got to San Diego and all that kind of stuff, I am not privy to that information. So the story goes, Doc took another tab of LSD the morning of the 12th, the day he was supposed to pitch. The high of LSD can last for a very long time, so Doc was definitely inebriated when it was time to take the mound. But what are the effects of LSD on normal human beings, let alone elite athletes? LSD, also known as acid, is a psychedelic drug famous for altering your perception and creating hallucinations. But how does it actually work and what is the effect on your body and, more importantly, your brain? LSD affects multiple brain receptors such as the dopamine receptors, adrenergic receptors, and glutamate receptors. But most research is on the stimulatory serotonin receptor 5-HT2A. LSD hits the receptor at an unexpected angle, causing it to fold over the LSD, creating a lid. The LSD is then trapped, which makes this receptor continually fire causing you to hallucinate. Your body responds by sucking the 5-HT2A receptor into the cell in order to degrade the LSD, but this can take up to 12 plus hours to happen, which is why the high can last so long. Recently, LSD research has seen a revival and using contemporary neuroimaging techniques, researchers found that the drug causes parts of your brain to communicate in unique ways, especially in the visual cortex, potentially explaining the vivid and complex hallucinations. There's also decreased blood flow in the default mode network, correlating to strong changes in consciousness characterized as ego dissolution, described as a feeling where the boundary that separates you from the rest of the world dissolves. Many people report this feeling brings a sense of reconnection with themselves, others, and the natural world. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up and, you know, I go outside and I remember her saying, you got a pitch today. I said, what are you talking about? And she said, San Diego, you got a pitch. I said, no, I pitched tomorrow. She says, oh, no, 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 look, look. And I said, well, what happened to yesterday? So there I was out there, you know, high as a Georgia pine, tripping on acid. We had a rookie on the team at that particular time named Dave Cash, and he sat next to me. And he kept saying after the first inning, he said, you got a no-no going. I said, yeah, right. He didn't respond uh, at the time. He was so wrapped up in the game. And then uh, about a couple of years later, he came back. He said, Dave, I still got a no-no going. 
I could also feel the pressure from other players wanting to tell him to shut up because you're not supposed to say nothing if somebody's throwing a no-hitter because it's bad luck. Nine comes down. He said, what the hell I did? I said, what do you mean what you did? You know what you did. You pitched a no-hitter. He said, I mean, no shit. I was gone. I was in the wind. I party all night. There is some skepticism when it comes to this no-hitter. Bob Smizek of the Pittsburgh Press believes Ellis' versions of the event that day. Although Smizek did not witness the game in person, he was the reporter to first break the story in 1984. Bill Christine, also of the Pittsburgh Press, does not believe Ellis's claim and was at the game that day. Christine was a beat reporter who practically lived with the team that year, by his account. Christine has said he did not notice anything unusual, and says if Ellis had reported to the stadium only 90 minutes before his scheduled start, reporters would have been told. John Mayno, a reporter who had extensive interactions with Ellis over his career, was skeptical about many stories told by Ellis, including the LSD no-hitter. Mayno said that he has not found a teammate who would corroborate with the story. However, one of his close friends, Scipio Spinks, a pitcher for the Houston Astros, has said he has no doubt Ellis was telling the truth about his LSD use as he was very familiar with Doc's habits, including the use of LSD. Ellis was on top of the world professionally and psychedelically on this special day. Ellis reported that he never used LSD during the season again, though he continued to use amphetamines. After the story was made public, he said that he regretted taking LSD that day because it robbed him of his greatest professional memory. Teammates of his has always spoke highly of Doc. Dan Pierce was a teammate. Pierce remembers Ellis's megawatt smile, his charisma, his ability to get along with everyone. Doc was all business when he got on the mound, Pierce said. Fortunately, with time, Doc sobered up and became a great asset to society in the fight to help others with substance abuse. He later became a drug counselor, working with addicts, inmates, and troubled youth. Doc Ellis died of complications stemming from chronic liver disease in a Los Angeles hospital on December 19, 2008. He was 63. Those who are baseball historians and interested in sports lore think Doc Ellis' performance is one of the wildest and wackiest moments in sports history. The first line in Ellis' Los Angeles Times obituary reads, the former major league pitcher who claimed to have thrown a no-hitter while on LSD. What's your take on this topic? Do you believe this story? Any suggestions on what I should do next? Let me know your thoughts below in the comments and subscribe for more investigation content like this. This is Sports Vaults presented by Data Productions. See you next time.